Hello guys, you're welcome back to Photographics Academy. Today we're going to be working on this image. I want to see the background that is going to be, you know, best fitting for it. So we'll try it across these backgrounds and we'll see the one that will be better. And I'll also show you one of the fastest ways to get your picture ready so that whenever you want to change the background, it's so easy to try different backgrounds on it and find the one suiting it the best. So the first thing we need to do is of, is of course size the image. I'm going to give you her, I'm going to be giving the image a lot of headroom so that we'll have a lot of space to play around with our backgrounds. I'll press OK and wait for the content aware field to do its job. Good. So the next thing to do is to separate her from the background. So make a selection of the object. Once your selection is done, go around the selection to make sure it is actually what you want. Once you are done confirming that, right click and go to select inverse. Then make a duplicate of your background layer. Right, right click one more time and go to layer via cut. So you have your picture on a separate background. You have your background on a separate layer. Sorry, your picture on a separate layer and your background on a separate layer. Now, you can even decide to, you know, clean off this opening that your image created here. How do you do that? Reselect or reload the object on the background. Then go to select, go to modify, go to expand. You can expand it by 11. So it's going to open it up like this. Then right click, go to feel content aware. Let's see how that handles it. And it's done. So now that area is filled up. We can turn on every other thing and we will still have your object or your background where it was. But I think this too takes away our shadow here. So I'm just going to stick with it open like that. There is no rule. You make the rules by yourself. Beautiful. That works for me. So now let's start bringing in the backgrounds and see exactly the one that is going to look the most suitable on the image. So this is the first one we're going to try. I'm going to unlock it, drag it all the way in, place it over my object, place my anchor point around her neck, and just scale in. Oh, this is beautiful. Try to straighten the lines. Press OK and change the blend mode to overlay. Multiply actually does a good job, but overlay will also do a good job. So I'm going to create a solid color in between the two of them. A gray solid color here. Change the blend mode to color. I'll try something darker. I think Multiply did a good job there. Color bond, overlay. Just anything that will get the job done. Let me change it to multiply and reduce the opacity. Yes. So look at the image, look at the background, looks really cool. I do not even need to restore the shadows. This one that we did here automatically brings the shadows back. Then let's try other backgrounds on it and see the one that will also look better. So we'll unlock this, drive it all the way in, place it over here. And of course, scale it in. Beautiful. So I think this came too close. Press OK. Change it to overlay. Now, if you want to stick with this background, which looks also really beautiful, all you need to do is just to create a solid color adjustment layer in between the two that will be very close to what she's wearing. Then change the blend mode to either overlay or color. Color does a good job and reduce it. So it just brings that uniformity, red light on it. Can even change and try other colors. But I think the red looks good. This is also very beautiful. This is so beautiful on it. Yeah, different colors that will work. I love this color a lot because it's giving her uh that standalone effect even though it's blending but she's very very visible in the shot this can as well even influence what we have here no it doesn't look good on that 
So if you're going to work with something like this, then you might need to do this little color casting that we did here. Then let's try another background and see how this one handles it. This is going to look real good. Let's sit over here. So you will notice that the moment you get your uh the moment you get your image properly set for background swapping, any background you bring in is going to be a very easy job to do. You start having a lot of work to do when you don't take your time and set your image well for background swapping. What I mean by setting your image well for background swapping is to properly separate it, retain your shadows, change the blend mode. All we did before we started bringing in the background. So you notice that all I'm doing now is that I'm just bringing in a background and changing the blend mode. And it's all looking like uh, she was shot on all of them because of all the, you know, background swapping and background manipulation we did down here to get it prepared. So you notice if we put a color here now, it's not going to look really, really nice. We'll have one more background to try. That looks really good. We'll have this one. I have a feeling this is going to look the best. So let's place this over here. Amazing. Place our anchor point in the middle over here. And try to keep her down. Good. So bring this closer. Bring this closer. Try to get the upper parts that we are losing into the sink. So I think she should be on the floor here. Scale it. Keep on the floor over here. Okay. Change the blend mode to value. Let's see how that works. Amazing. 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 This looks stunning. Extremely beautiful. All we need to do is to darken the down area because I know this is, you know, particularly too bright like this. Pick up our curves and just bring that area down. Feather it properly. Make sure you feather it properly. Good. And it gives you a very nice effect. Tell me the background you prefer in the comment section. Is it this one or this one or this one? Or even the first one we tried. Tell me the background that you prefer across all of them. But I think the one that looks really cool to me is this one. And this is the one I am going to be sticking with. Try this technique out in your own image, in your studio. Let's see the magic you create. So when you finish doing all of this, there's one more step you need to take to make sure that everything comes together. And that's creating a global color grading. So I'll go to my color lookup, or if you're using your gradient map, whatever you are going to use, just create more like a filter effect for everything. So that no matter even the background you are using, it's going to have a very uniform color synergy across all of them. So let's see. Let's go for something downwards here. Beautiful. I think I like this. But before. The after, bring it down a little, then go back to our gradient mapping, change the blend mode to soft light, and lose it very well. Go into the gradient, change the, for, uh, the gradient type to noise, make sure that your roughness is between 5 to 10, then just start changing the color from randomize. Oh, this looks really, really beautiful. Going to reduce it. So we will have that beautiful red theme across the image. Let me group the two color grades. So this is it before the color grading. This is it after the color grading. So one thing you will notice is that this color grading has a way of making the picture look very, very uniform. Now, even if we turn off the background and try another background on it, it's going to still, you know, look good because of that color grading we did to unify everything together but i think the background we chose initially or even this one gives us a better choice 
of background. Thank you so much for watching this amazing video. Like I said initially, tell me the background you prefer in the comment section. And if you also want to gain access to any of these backgrounds that we use, comment background in the comment section and you will have access to our Telegram community where we drop these backgrounds back to back. One more time, thank you for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you subscribe, turn on the notification bell to get notified every single time we drop a new video. Until then, see you on the next one.